Hi guys. Uh, good evening or uh, good morning. Hope you're doing good. Last seven or six days for the exams, and my strategy today is uh, to give you a general overview about how we can make the best use of this time in next uh, six or seven days. Uh, so I have a three. My discussion today, I'm going to break it down into three parts. So the first part of the discussion is going to be uh, what are we expected to do uh, before the exam. So I'll probably just you know keep it simple and call them a strategy for uh, what do we do before the exams. Uh, today I also want to talk about uh, certain things that we want to be careful uh, during the exams, and then. Uh, I also have something for you uh, regarding after the exams, right? So uh, the discussion, I'm going to break it down into three components before, during and after. And then uh, I think I should take about 20 minutes to finish my discussion. And after that, I would be happy to take your queries. So you can uh, keep on posting them in the chat box uh, throughout the session and I'll try to answer them whenever I can. Okay, so before the session. So today is about 38. So how many days are we left with? We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Your exam happens to be on seven. Now, so roughly about six days or five days, depending on because uh, many of us would also be traveling uh, to a different location to write the exams. So, in terms of what things uh, uh, can be done to optimize the results. Okay, so first tip is uh, I'll recommend do not do any new topic now. Okay, don't try to learn. Uh, new readings. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, if there are about 60 readings in the level one curriculum, and let's say a couple of them you would, you've not been able to finish. Okay, so there are two readings, you've not done them so far. Uh, it's okay to let them go because the cost benefit ratio now would be against learning any new material. So the primary emphasis uh, throughout this window is going to be on revision. So we have to revise smartly and we have to practice. Right? That's how we are going to break down the discussion. Now, how do you revise and how do you practice? So I have a very interesting strategy. The trick is in the last uh, few days, you want to do less. Instead of trying to do too much, you want to do less. But you, whatever you do, it should be done well so that you start feeling confident. So I have a list of three things which I believe might uh, be very helpful. Uh, so first on the recommended list is... Uh, Active revision, active revision with the help of LOS statements, learning outcome statements, or learning outcome statements here. Now, I did talk about this strategy earlier in one of my prior videos, and I think uh, now is an excellent time to start using this technique, right? So, what you want to do is uh, if you just search for uh, CFL level one learning outcomes, you would find one PDF document on CFL website. What the document has, the document has a list of learning outcomes. So what you want to do is take a printout of them, read the learning outcome, and try to see if you remember the contents, formulas, and stuff inside it. If you remember it, tick mark and move on. Uh, if you don't remember it, then go inside your juice notes or curriculum or whatever material you've prepared from and look through it uh, carefully once. So I'll recommend you probably revise through learning outcomes once or twice. It does not take a lot of time. Uh, the beauty of this technique is you you focus on what you don't remember rather than what you remember. So I think that works pretty well. The second thing that I'll recommend doing is uh, I recently finished, uh, in fact, just a couple of hours uh, before or ago, I finished a crash course for CFL level one. And what we tried to do during this crash course, we picked up about... Uh, 30 or 20 concepts from every subject and we uh, did some practice questions or concepts around it. So uh, during each of my sessions, so I took about six sessions, we generated those six or seven uh, PDF files. Now what those PDF files have is, those PDF files have high probability concepts in like my opinion, uh, which have a good chance of being tested on the exam and they're fairly comprehensive. So I just spoke to my team and we've decided to make these uh, PDFs public. So we'll be uploading these PDFs on the Fintry website. 
uh, I would be putting a link in the description of this video. And what you want to do is uh, when you're revising for next six, seven days, you can go through these PDFs once. Uh, you can use a checklist approach and you can ensure that you know the concepts which are discussed inside the PDF. Okay, third thing that you can consider doing in these days is uh, take the curriculum end of the chapter questions. Okay, so roughly about 1500 of them and practice them. And this is very important. Practice them horizontally. Okay, so I recommend doing a horizontal revision, which in my experience produces phenomenal results. So what do I mean by horizontal revision? Uh, let us say we have a reading on time value of money. We have reading on discounted cash flow. And in this fashion, we have those uh, 60 readings. Okay, or approximately 60 readings. Now, the problem is if you start solving them vertically, what would be vertical? Vertical is starting with question number one of TVM, two of 3VM, three, and solving all the, let's say, 30 questions of TVM. This is the vertical revision. The problem with vertical revision is that it doesn't align with your exams because your exams are always horizontal. Now, what I mean by horizontal, you might get one question from TBM, one from DCF. So what you can do is you can keep a target of about 240 practice questions a day. Uh, and with this run rate in about five to six days, you can cover a big chunk of those curriculum end of the chapter questions. And how you're going to do it is keep a target of four questions per reading, okay? So four questions per reading, pick up some random numbers. So let, let me say, let's pick up one, three, seven, and nine. So every day in the morning, you get up, you pick up four random numbers. And, sorry, just a minute, please. Okay, uh, so every day, uh, pick up four random numbers, well, let's say one, three, seven, and nine. And then you practice question number one, three, seven, and nine of time value of money. Practice one, three, seven, nine of discounted cash flow. And you finish this for all the 60 readings, right? So what you're doing is every day you're practicing questions from all the readings in the CFA text. And the beauty of this is, let's assume if you're not able to finish all the questions till exams, that's still fine uh, because you've covered your ground. You've practiced questions from entire section. Okay, so see if it works. Uh, this type of technique worked really well for me. And uh, hopefully this will benefit as well, right? So before the exam, uh, three things that I'm recommending you to do. Active revision with the help of learning outcomes. Uh, going through the crash course PDFs. Uh, the link of those PDFs would be available on the description of this video. Uh, you can download these PDFs and run through them and then try to solve curriculum end of the chapter questions horizontally. Okay, that's the general framework. Now, some small observations here. Uh, apart from studies, there are a few things that needs to be taken care of. Okay, so one is uh, fixing your body cycle. Okay, so again, uh, I spoke about this in one of the earlier videos that your exams are going to be from 9 to 12 and 2 to 5. So if you're used to, uh, currently if you're studying late in the night and you've been sleeping in the morning hours, your body is not going to support that system on the day of exams. So maybe uh, you want to start sleeping a little early, uh, start your day a little early. And keep 9 to 12 and 2 to 5 as intense uh, practice session for yourself with the help of those horizontal revision. Uh, and as long as you do that, I think you are more or less okay from before exam perspective. Okay. Now, during the exam, some really important instructions. Uh, I say this every year and every year I've seen people making mistakes. So, first thing is... Take a printout of your exam ticket and compare your exam ticket with your passport and ensure that uh, the given name and the surname, given name and surname, this matches precisely. Uh, I've seen issues happening where, uh, let's say, your father's name appears in the passport, but it's not there in your exam ticket or the other way around. 
So you don't want those kind of issues happening with you on the day of exam. So ensure this now. And if there's anyone who realizes that the names are different, there's a form available on Institute website. You can fill up the form and you can get it done. Their customer service is really good. Or you can also make them a call. You should be okay there. Okay, so that's about the exam ticket and passport. Second thing is uh, during the exam, the whole, uh, there would be proctors who would be kind of observing all the candidates. And even if you create slightest of impression that you are looking at, uh, okay, something is wrong with my camera. It's just one minute. Uh, wait a minute, please. Let me see if I can fix it myself. Yeah, that's a massive version of me. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, okay. I just realized the bottom part of my screen is not visible. Some of you posted this in the chat box. So uh, I'll read out the third part. I, I spoke about active revision crash course and then end of the chapter questions horizontal okay so assuming this is out of our way uh, i'll come back to topic uh, proctors so the invigilation is very strict uh, and what happens is like this is this i find a little strange uh, i've heard of experiences where uh, during the exams the proctors did not uh, warn a can warn the candidate uh, but after the exams, uh, the professional misconduct notices were issued, right? Now, typically with any crime, the objective of policing should be to stop the crime from happening. Uh, of course, this is a professional setup and I get all of it. Uh, but there have been instances where candidates have not been warned during the exam and then they received notices. So most of the people, if you're watching this video, you're serious about the exams. So do not even create an impression that... Uh, you know, you're looking at someone's paper. Okay, so be careful with that. The third important thing is this uh, CFA Institute has this concept called uh, similarity analysis. I don't know how, how should I spell it. Similarity, I don't know if I'm spelling it right. I just scribble a little bit here. Yeah. Similarity analysis. Now, what is similarity analysis? Uh, let's say if there are two candidates sitting next to each other, okay, within like certain radius, and the percentage, uh, number of percentage of questions uh, or options chosen by A and B are quite similar, the correct as well as incorrect. Then uh, apparently they have some sort of algorithm that detects that two candidates have similar answers and then both the candidates are issued notices. Okay. Uh, so I did get an experience to work with a similar case in the past. And what I realized is there is no way to prove that, uh, you know, you haven't cheated uh, in this type of setup because uh, there are no CCTV cameras and nothing to support you. So one thing that might work is that on your question paper, anyways, you're allowed to do the rough work, right? You can write whatever you want to write on question paper. So uh, if there is, let's say, question number five and, you know, it has a body like this, there would be plenty of space available in the margin. So you can do your rough work here. Like you don't have to present the solution. Just do your rough work there. and instead of directly marking in the OMR, you can mark on the question paper and on the OMR both, right? So that way, if something like that happens to us, at least we will have some sort of a proof that there were markings and a little bit of rough working on the question paper as well. So that's something that again, we want to be a little careful with. Uh, so this was the general uh, instruction. Now, in terms of uh, approaching subject. So uh, three hour paper, 120 questions. So we are looking at uh, the first one hour, eight to nine, the second hour, nine to 10, and the third one, sorry, messed up here, FRM starts at eight, nine to 10, 10 to 11, and 11 to 12. Now you want to finish 120 questions. What I recommend is you try to maintain a run rate of about 
40 odd questions an hour at least keep a target that way okay so if you're cognizant right from hour one that you are trying to hit 50 uh, and even if you hit 45 that's fine but if you target 40 and you hit 30 that's going to be a problem so you try to keep a target of 50 50 and then you keep target of 20. however my uh, uh, conservatism here comes from the fact that every uh, few questions on the exam could work like something called as a distractor what what do i mean by that uh, imagine there is a question uh, it requires you to calculate you feel that you're very close but you're not getting the answer right and then what happens is it hurts hurts our ego right it, we feel that we can do it uh, we're very close and we end up spending a lot of time and the downside with that is that you might spend disproportionate time on that one question, but you are losing out on five or six easy questions which are going to follow after that. So what I recommend, you practice questions, you come across something that you feel will take a lot of time or it is taking a lot of time, put a large star mark on it and then move on to the next question. Okay, put a large star mark, move on to the next question. And if you are able to follow the strategy of 50-50, then in the last one hour, you'd be left with a lot of time. Then you can go back and revisit all the star mark questions. That way you're optimizing your time and you're spending more time on the stuff which is uh, easy rather than the difficult questions. Okay, so that's the theory behind this strategy. Uh, what else? Uh, I think I've covered more or less during the exam. So yeah, what, what do you need to carry? So of course, carry your exam ticket. Remember, you are not supposed to write anything on the exam ticket, right? Absolutely nothing. So make sure exam ticket is crystal clear. Uh, carry a calculator. Now batteries, like do, do you need to carry extra batteries? Uh, I've, I've, like I used my calculator for 14 odd years before I replaced the batteries. So generally it's not an issue, but if it's something that, you know, uh, remains in your mind, uh, then I recommend you change your batteries now. Of course, if you have an access to an extra calculator, that's a great news. Okay, but it has to be the approved calculators, either the Texas or HP. Uh, you need good quality pencils. Try avoid using those lead pencils. Uh, get the regular ones. Uh, like they have a recommended type of pencil, but I think anything works. Uh, get some sharpeners. Get erasers. And that's it. So that's more or less what you need to carry with you on the day of, uh, of course, passport. Don't forget your passport, please. Right? That's your list that you want to carry during the exams. Okay, after the exam, uh, once the exam gets over, after the exam, those of you uh, who are planning to write June 2020 exams. Okay, so I'd recommend you start your studies immediately the next day do not even take a break for a day uh, so like in be behavioral world we have this concept of flow or momentum and there's in fact a book with the same name and what you guys have been doing is you have been studying very intensively for the last few days and you would be studying intensively for next few so you have been able to build that flow for yourself so you don't want to take a break and uh, spoil the momentum if you're planning to write the level two june 2020 level 2 exams uh, so you start studying Im immediately without waiting for the results and then of course if the results come out and things go south then we'll figure out what to do next okay so that's roughly what i wanted to discuss uh, now I'll, I'll invest about 10 minutes and take a few queries or questions if you have anything you can just post them on the chat box okay so preet uh, has asked I've scored about 64% in the four mocks. Is it pretty good? Yeah, it, it is uh, It is quite good, Preet. Uh, you've been, if you've been doing about 60% in the mocks, I think that's a fairly decent score. Kavaljit, why don't you open a branch in Delhi or NCR2? Uh, thanks for the Kavaljit. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, maybe, maybe very soon. Aritya, I appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Aritya. Uh, another query I have is, what do you think would be a good score on CFA mocks? My score is about 84%. Wow, that's phenomenal. 84% uh, is mind-blowing score. I, I don't 
think you need a lot of work. Just take it easy for the next few days. <clears throat> the PDF on the link is not for free. Uh, the PDFs would be free of cost. Uh, we would be posting them on the Fintry site and they would be free to download for anyone. How to improve ethics? Uh, so we've recently prepared uh, a nice PDF which summarizes uh, the required versus recommended section. So you can go through it once. Um, you can go through the required versus recommended sections uh, once and then uh, just practice curriculum end of the chapter questions on ethics. Okay, Prithvi, that's a great question. Prithvi is asking, wouldn't you recommend taking mocks in the next few days? Uh, it depends, Prithvi, on how many mocks you've taken. Uh, there is no harm in taking one mock in the next six days. Uh, the only risk I see is if the mock turns out to be too difficult, uh, psychologically, you know, that's going to affect us. And trust me, the mindset on the day of exam makes a big difference. Okay, but uh, if, you, if you feel that you're up for it, uh, definitely take one particular, you can take one mock. Uh, in this interval, uh, there's no harm. In fact, uh, even for my classroom program, we have one mock schedule for the candidates. So you can definitely consider doing that. And if you've not taken any mocks so far, then probably you can consider writing two mocks. <clears throat> I'm struggling to return formulas. Is there a list to go through maybe twice or thrice every day? Uh, Goran, I have those uh, formula revision videos on the website. So watch them once, uh, make a list and then keep on repeating it. That should do the job for you. How to use the required versus recommended given by you? Uh, kind of try to uh, look at the key factual sections. Uh, for example, seven years or quarterly reporting and all of those areas, just read through them once carefully. And when you practice questions, automatically you will start understanding what I purpose, why those uh, that presentation was created. Omkar is asking, uh, I was not able to give mocks. Should I give it now? Yes, Omkar. Uh, take at least two of them now. If you, if you feel prepared, what you can do is you can skip some of the EOC questions and try to take two mocks. Rahul is asking how to revise FRA. Uh, Rahul, go through the PDF that would be uploading on the website. Uh, I think to a large extent, uh, it will cover important concepts. And after that, practice curriculum, end of the chapter questions. Yeah, that's like, you know, every question that you ask me now, I think my answer is going to be same. Uh, End of the chapter questions are magical. They're extremely comprehensive. I love them. I think if there's anyone, any candidate who's thorough with end of the chapter questions, uh, more or less you're done with level one exams. I have... Uh... Priyam, how to go about revising most important readings in FRA and QM in last one week? Uh, Priyam, download those PDFs that we would be uploading. Uh, I think that would give you a really good idea of uh, the important, like in our opinion, what sections are important and go through them once. I think that should kind of cut out the job for us. Okay, let's see what else we have. I have, I think, last two minutes left. Saurabh says I'm getting 70%. Am I good to go? Yes, Saurabh, that's brilliant. Rohit is asking, roll numbers, name are to be written with pencils? Yes, you don't need to carry pens with you on the day of exam. Uh, flixing, I'm left with one FRA study session. What should I do? Uh, if it's the last or the first one, you can skip it. Uh, but if it's the one in the center, then the, you're, we are exposing ourselves to a little risk there. Okay, I think I've answered most of the questions. Uh,
So she's asking, I'm still left to revise economics and portfolio management. Will the crash course videos and summary videos be enough? Yes. Uh, yeah. So if there's anyone who did not attend the crash course uh, that I recently conducted, uh, but if you have access to it, I strongly recommend you to go through those videos. Uh, I think we've done a phenomenal job. Uh, we've covered each of those important concepts. So uh, go through those videos once. I'm sure you'd feel very confident after watching those videos. Okay, what else? <clears throat> Last two questions. Yeah, do you need anything? Okay. What What is Manoj planning to do? Should we buy CFA curriculum for 2020? Okay, he must be a 2020 candidate, my guess. Rahul Bajaj says, I have not solved any questions yet. Is there a, any chance to clear? Uh, okay, so again, I think I'm going to close with that question. So here is what I want to tell you. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in the whole, uh, you know, thing process. And what I've always believed is uh, the process is more important than results. So like, I know some of us have a tendency, we tend to think too much about, you know, what happens on the day of exams and what would be my results. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, what matters is whether you've done your process right. Okay, and what was your process? Your process was this entire learning curve that, you know, we've gone through in the last four, five, six, whatever number of months you've prepared. So just keep your cool for next five, six days. Uh, do it right. Try to optimize your. Don't try to do too much. In fact, I would not recommend investing 14, 18 hours now. It does not make sense. Uh, if you're available full time, invest a reasonable uh, eight to ten hours a day, uh, and try to do what I recommended in the first uh, section of this video, and then just go and write the exams and enjoy the process. Okay. And if you make the process enjoyable, the results will also be enjoyable. So just think on those lines. Great. So with this, uh, I'm going to wrap up the session. Of course, most of you have my direct number. So if you have any queries, even after this, uh, feel free to call me up. I'll be more than happy to discuss. So wish you all the best. Uh, do well. Enjoy the process. Uh, imagine if you pass level one, you're not going to get uh, that experience of writing the exam again. Now, you might find this stupid, but Trust me, that exam writing experience is going to be phenomenal. Uh, you're going to enjoy this. So enjoy the process. Uh, wish you all the best. Do well. And I'll see you uh, across the table at level two exams. Bye-bye.